It all began on June 9th of 2020 when I took a trip to Aiken, South Carolina to meet a pony that I'd seen for sale on Facebook. Her name was Tosca, a six-year-old Welsh pony mare who had been left relatively untouched in a pasture for all six years of her life. A few days later, our purchase was finalized. As soon as I was able to bring my pony home, I realized that her training was going to be a long and strenuous process. Her respect and manners were non-existent, and she was extremely fearful, which is evident through her body language from the first few videos at home. Every day, I would go out into her field, which at the time happened to be my front yard, and work on simple tasks such as haltering and standing. She eventually began to become comfortable with my mom and I. Unfortunately, our progress was short-lived when I left for three weeks to compete at a horse show in Chicago with my other horse. I returned to a pony who was not just fearful, but practically untouchable. I spent about two weeks sitting on the ground in her pasture with a feed bucket, rewarding her any time she would come close enough to let me. Sometimes I would lose my patience and try the philosophy of, if I chase her for long enough, she'll eventually get tired enough to let me catch her, right? But it was always unsuccessful. After a few weeks in her pasture with the feed bucket, Tosca eventually trusted me enough to put the halter on, which was a huge milestone in our journey. I was finally able to begin working with my pony on groundwork in the arena under the guidance of my mentor, Danielle. The goal was to first teach her respect through moving away and coming closer to me as I asked, using the rope and my body language. She picked up on the concepts quickly, proving day after day how intelligent she is. Tosca often had her own ideas about where she wanted to be, and there was no stopping her. I don't think that I could even count the number of times that I chased her down roads, through fields, and around the barn. At one point, there was even a running joke at the barn about how many gates she was able to break. We continued working together every day, both of us learning about the process as we went along. After many incidents of loose ponies and rope-burned hands, I felt like we were finally beginning to make some progress. She began to understand the concept of lunging, which is what you see here, and the foundation for starting a young horse. The day came when Danielle and I felt like Tosca was ready to be introduced to the idea of being backed, which is what we call getting on a horse. I started by simply laying over her to get used to the weight, which was far from perfect during the first few sessions. She quickly began to understand what we wanted of her. A few days later, I was able to ride my pony for the first time, which mainly entailed an abundance of pats and treats, as we wanted to ensure that it was a positive first experience. Luckily, she was relatively unfazed with the idea of a person, and a tall one at that, being on her back, so we were able to begin walking around on the lunge line. Once I had done this for about a week, I started incorporating the use of a saddle into my short rides. Danielle had suggested that we start her bareback, meaning without a saddle, as it's less overwhelming for the young horses. I spent the next week going through a process that equestrians refer to as desensitizing, which is basically just exposing a horse to as many scary or unexpected things as you can think of to lessen their natural flight instinct in the face of a frightening stimuli. During this, I continued to lunge Tosca with the saddle on, even introducing her to poles and raised cavalettis. She proved her athleticism. The flapping nor the tightness of the girth, which holds the saddle in place, seemed to bother her, so Danielle was able to start lunging her with me in the tack. Although she took to her new job quite nicely, I won't say that this phase in her training process was not without hardships. While Tosca began developing a solid foundation under saddle, I made sure to continue our education in the barn. We worked on skills like being hosed off, getting along with other horses, like my horse, King, getting clean, and of course, dirty again, being blanketed, and even tolerating children. She began to develop quite the personality and grew very fond of me. She didn't so much enjoy getting her teeth done or having her feet trimmed, but with the patient Dennis and Farrier, she tolerated them both nicely. Tosca became very solid in walking and trotting off the lunge line while learning to associate voice cues like trot, walk, and halt with their respective actions. She quickly understood that leg pressure might go forward and after several months started walking, trotting, and steering around the whole arena with ease. We practiced lots of halting with a variety of aids, such as my seat, hands, and voice. Once she was unfazed with poles and practically everything else inside, we moved outside, where my trainer Harrison acted as a lead to provide Tosca with a bit of comfort in the overwhelming environment. It didn't take her long to settle in, and a few days later, she was trotting around like a pro. In January, it was time for my pony to learn how to canter, so we moved back on the lunge line. Like every other step in the process, it was rough and by no means without flaws. But in a matter of weeks, we were able to canter around off the lunge line. It was at this moment that I finally felt like I was able to put complete trust in my once frightened feral pony. 
Since the making of this video, Tosca has been introduced to small jumps and taken to trail riding. She will soon be listed for sale to hopefully find a rider who will be able to further her riding education and show career.